Rick comes up and uh, says, "Hey, uh, I want you to sign. Let's sign. I want you to sign a lifetime contract." And I was like, "Yeah, no problem. Let's do it." <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he got you get he grabbed a napkin and wrote like a short little two sentence contract, and we both signed it. And we should have kept it. I wish I wish we had kept. It. Yeah. And he wanted to give. He wanted to take it and show it to Dad. And did you ever show it to him? No, because your dad was so hot that morning when he got there because he heard the story because of what yeah. he had done. All he had, who told him all about that? I do. It wasn't me. Yeah. Because <laughs> because I'm standing by the car when the, before the race started. Yeah. And he walks up to me. You know, hey, he catch you by your collar like that when he's talking to you. Yep. He pulled. He got real close to me and he said, "I'm gonna kill Schrader." And I said, "I had nothing to do with it." He said, "I'm gonna kill him." And I thought. I'm about 10th, and he's in the back. How long is it going to take him <laughs> to get to me? Because because I'm going to move over. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it was it was it was it was funny. I, he really was mad, huh? Yeah. I always he, I thought he, he was, was sort of hot. messing with Schrader he, like no, you were. He was hot. I mean, he was mad. So him and Schrader didn't talk for uh, probably a year, year. What? Yeah. He he over co- that coincidentally dumped Schrader at Pocono the next race, Cup race they ran. Whoa! Yeah, as far as I remember, um, I don't know who told him what went on, but somebody did. Yeah. So that I mean, we'll we'll get Schrader to go in more detail, but basically, <laughs> I just went and hung out with Schrader and did whatever his guys did. We drank beer, but I was only four, six, four, sixteen. Four, I think. Four, I think I drove my truck to the airport to get on okay. the plane. So I thought I, you were fourteen. I had to had my driver's license. Well, you couldn't go in a club. I remember that. I know that. I couldn't okay, go into right. particular clubs. Okay, but but them old Kansas clubs. And so. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't with them. I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I sat out in the parking lot at the club and watched some guy sell guns out the trunk of his <laughs> Cadillac. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know why Dale Earnhardt had <laughs> such a big problem about this. <laughs> yeah. This is where he learned about the. Uh, but it was a uh, yeah aftermarket he, gun sales. <laughs> I was so hungover that I hid from Dad. For several hours that morning, out on the pits, uh, yeah. out in the pits, this guy was, I was sitting in Schrader's pit, and this guy's gluing lug nuts on the tires, and I'm just sitting on one of them tires, and it's the sun's out, and I'm feeling like crap. <laughs> and Dad walked up and looked down at me, and I looked up at him, and he didn't say a word, and I didn't say a word, and he just knew. I knew he knew, and he walked away. And... I didn't think he'd be that upset about it. I think that he – I felt like, damn, you knew this was going to happen. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, why are you he surprised? Went with Kenny Schrader. Schrader, right. <laughs> Schrader wasn't a mystery to anybody. I, he honestly, knew what you got. I honestly believe that Schrader had asked if Kelly could go on the trip, and Dad turned that down and said Dale Jr. should go. And <laughs> Kelly could Kelly go. Now, yeah. that would have been something. <laughs> and so Schrader's like, all right, fine. And, I mean, we ran, we went to like – Four or five. We went to a dirt track every night racing. It was amazing. And mm. they drank beer, and I drank beer with them. But anyhow, he bum rides, didn't he? Didn't he get a ride with somebody after the race and a pickup to get him to the airport or something? He was. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was a wild week, and that's just no. That was an average week for Schrader. I know, right? But it was the <laughs> funnest thing ever. If, I mean, <clears throat> was he more mad than what he would have been mad at Bodine? Like compare the two, Schrader or Bodon? Who gets the the worst of it? You know, I don't. I don't. He that morning, I never saw Dale mad. Oh, with he whatever was going on with them two happened on the track. Mm-hmm. But this was before the race. This was family. Yeah, this, this is personal. Was, this is personal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I knew the difference between kind of playing upset and upset. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was tough. Well, so. One of the funnest parts, uh, one of the funnest things that I like to talk about when is the uh, our first meeting at yeah. HMS. He <laughs> likes this one. I love um, this one. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah, we, I'm going to let you tell it, and I'll see if you tell and it. And then correctly. you fix we've it. Talked yeah. about you fix it. it. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've talked about it on the show before, and, pe- and people were surprised, but um, I had, and you might not know everything, all of it, but you probably do. But we went to, we had went to Joe Gibbs. We met with Joe and the owner of the Redskins, Snyder, at his house, right? Yeah. And the con- they showed us a contract. And I'd been making, I, I think I, my salary was 600000 or something at DEI. I can't remember. It might have been twice that. But it wasn't, it was 
comparable to most drivers, it was in in the lower end. So I was, but I thought that was a lot. You know, I'm like, man, you know, this is great. And then when I went and seen this contract that Joe handed to me and Kelly, I, it like short circuited my brain. Like I couldn't believe somebody was wanting to pay me this kind of money, right? Yeah. And so when I went to meet with you, my heart was my heart was to drive for Rick. HMS to me all these years had been this perfect, you know, opportunity and this best team, and they just won and won and won and won, and uh, they had a really amazing reputation. Plus the family connection. I had, I was, I, I had been racing for family for all these years, and that's such a security blanket. Yeah. And I'd be like, man, I kind of have that same security blanket if I go r- drive for Rick. He's like family. He'll take care of me. Um, give me the benefit of the doubt. And, and uh, anyways, we go to the meeting, and, and he's got that paper, and he slid that thing across the table, and I was like, uh-uh, I ain't looking at that. <laughs> I was like, I don't even want to know what it says. And You really said that to him? I don't want to see that what that says? Oh, yeah. or did, he said it. And I said, well, okay, don't look at it. <laughs> 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 no, it was pretty, it was, it was actually, it was, it was, it was, everybody was a little nervous, you know, and, and I really wanted to drive the car. And uh, Ricky had told me, my son, <clears throat> he's going to drive for us one day. So I never thought it would happen. And so I, I had labored over this contract for like, with Marshall for like weeks before oh. I was going to show it to him, you know. And so, so we go in the room and sit down and, and I said, well, here's, here, Dale, here's, here's what we can do for you. And he said, I don't care about that. And I thought, give it, no, okay, <laughs> let me have it back. Don't look at it. <laughs> but he said, <clears throat> but then it was kind of funny because Marshall was in with us and Marshall was kind of, he, he was kind of uptight. And so Dale, we were talking about it. Dale said, all right, I thought we had it. We, we were all done. He said, I have, I have a couple things that I want. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. This is going to be big. This is going to be real big. And he said, I want the skirts on the car painted the same color as the car. And I was took me about a second to say, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it still blows my mind. Yeah, that, 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 okay. And I think – the helicopter. You wanted the helicopter for a couple of races. To Martinsville. Yeah. Darlington, maybe, I guess. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I was like, I need, I want a helicopter ride to Martinsville. <laughs> Unlike any negotiation uh, you never, have ever I mean, had. Ever, never, ever. I mean, don't care about the money. Don't care about that. Yeah. Somebody had to eventually look at I, that paper, though. But, yeah, well, he, I told, I said, you and Kelly sort that out. Yeah. Whatever y'all agree to. I'd already had more money than I knew what to do with. So, like, I money wasn't a money money didn't motivate me and make make me happy. You know what made me happy was how my car looked. Side skirts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if a- the side skirts aren't painted, the ruins the entire car. <laughs> and I drive the car. I want the dang thing to look good. Uh, and then and then I when, never understood drivers we, that don't care about what their car looks like. Oh, we had two sponsors hooked up, and uh, so we were in a meeting with them and. And we go through everything with them, all the big stuff, the numbers and everything. And he said, uh, oh, there's one more thing we got to have. Dale's got to design the car. <laughs> and they said, what? And, no, we can't. I said, that's the deal. <laughs> Dale's got to design the car. Yeah, that's, that's a deal breaker. Yep. And I'm sitting there. We're looking at all this money, and we're going to blow it over. <laughs> he's he's going to design the car. <laughs> Yeah, but you did, and it looked good. Yeah, and they it's liked all right. it. It's all right. I look back at I. I remember sending him the paint schemes, and it felt frivolous. Like sending Rick the ideas that I had. Right. I'm like, hey, Rick. Uh, you know, I want to involve, be involved, and I want to send you some of these, and you can show them to whoever. And I felt friv- It felt frivolous. It because well, it was. Yeah, I mean, like petty. He, it felt petty. Like, like he didn't have it, something else in his life going on yeah. at the moment. He's got to sit there and mess around with paint schemes. That was the most important thing. At well, time. in my to, in my life, that was at the top, near the top of the priority list. Had you had problems with side skirts? I mean, did you ever get your opinion uh, uh, sought out at DEI? The, the, where well, did you nah, get burned we had, on this? We had black side skirts, and then I think the last few races we might have started Put painting red. them red. Okay. 
So, you know, if, if you really need to know, the first time I ever saw this done really well was when Rusty Wallace started his Xfinity team. He had uh, a bright yellow and black number 66 car, and I think Hank Parker's brother, Catfish, drove the car. Billy, yeah. Billy Parker. but uh, And then eventually uh, uh, Rusty's son drove it. But this car had these side skirts painted on it, and it was freaking beautiful. And it looked like it was so low to the ground compared to the other cars without side skirts. I said, I'm hooked. Mm. Never, uh, for the rest of my life, I'm going for painted side skirts. I was going, I'm the one out there driving the car, and I felt like, God, that's kind of a good thing that it, that the driver cares what the car looks like. or And it's a motivation. Like, if you like the way the car looks, you're going to want to take that car and do something good with it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I never understood drivers that don't have an opinion or a, a care, I guess, about what the car looks like. You know, that to me, the, the design and the beauty of the car, like trying to win best appearing car and trying to have good craftsmanship <laughs> and trying to build a pretty race car from the inside out has always been something that was important to me. Um, well, you know, J- Jimmy did that. Yeah, my Uncle Robert. And, yeah, with uh, – uh, Jimmy Johnson. Oh, Jimmy Johnson on, did on that the with the Ally car. Yeah. yeah, he sent me. Well, he said you were you worked with him on. Well, that. I just gave him my opinion, but if you call a couple text messages back and forth working with him, but he sent me his. He's like, hey man, I'm gonna help design this car. What do you think about X, Y, and Z? And I was like, this is what I would do. But uh, yeah, so Jimmy, maybe I rubbed off on this. Big yeah. time, seven time hey, champion. Listen, you know we learned from Kozlowski a few <laughs> weeks ago that uh, that uh, Mr. Penske is deeply involved in the paint yeah. schemes and the looks, and we he didn't checks know that off drivers, all the paint schemes. How about like, that? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that? I I, I did know that. So so I heard that. The question is, is, I'm not so quirky after all. <laughs> right. Well, so how how much do paint schemes and the look of your race cars actually matter to you? It matters a lot. I like for the cars to look good. Yeah. And there's some paint schemes I haven't liked, but. Uh, Usually it's between the driver and the and the sponsor, that's what they want. So, so you yeah. don't typically get involved. Have you ever just absolutely killed a, a paint scheme idea, saying that will never be on my yes. race car? You yep. have. I have. What was it? I'm not gonna say. <laughs> Do it. I wasn't gonna <laughs> no. ask, but I knew he would. <laughs> I knew it. No, no, not gonna happen. Was it recent? No. Was it Dale? No. <laughs> Why can't you say if it was so long ago? <laughs> I'm just. I'm not going. You don't there. have to say. Just nod. No, all right, just just go start, start going to drivers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know I came up with a paint scheme for the 48, <clears throat> the new one. You did? No, no. I came up with one, and they killed it. <laughs> Jimmy killed it. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> he said, that's too old-fashioned. That, <laughs> oh, that's man. That's too conservative. Really? And that's when you two were bouncing back and forth. Yeah. So oh. I actually like the one they came up with. Yeah, I think it's a good-looking car. The, the ally looks good on the hood. Yeah. Um, what was the conversation like when you sat down with Latart and told him that he was going to be my crew chief? Um, did you sit down with him? Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Did he t- thought he was getting fired. Did you know that? No. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's what he says. Well, yeah. he thought yeah. he was getting let go. Yeah. Um, if you go back to that particular point in time in that career, yeah. in my career, in his career, when he starts to tell the story, I'm thinking that he's going to say that when he heard the news that he was going to be my crew chief, he was going to be a little disappointed. Like, oh, man, you know, I'm going from Jeff Gordon to Dale Jr. and Dale's been struggling. This is, this is going to be a hard, tough hill. But he was actually relieved because yeah. he thought he was going in there to get <laughs> let go because he, had, he and Jeff yeah. hadn't done so well. But I, I, lo- I, I just felt like he would be exactly what you needed. Yeah. And uh, Boy, and, was he. And, and so – I mean, I think the day after I told him, he flew up to your house. Oh, he yeah. drove up to your house yeah. and spent the day with you. Yeah, yeah. So that's this is uh, you're you're amazing. Celia Tart's amazing too. And like you said, he when he heard that news, he went home and thought about it, <clears throat> and the next day called me and said, "Let's get together. You know about this deal. We're going to work together. We're going to do it together." Because he felt like that it was sort of his last uh, opportunity, too, because he had kind of failed and or this thing that he and Jeff had going on had ground to a halt. And he looked at me and he kind of said, this is our, this is both of our final shot. You know, we're going to have to work hard and make it work. I said, you tell me what you want me to do, <laughs> and I'll do it. 
You he, sort of felt like you were at the uh, I was out, at the of, end. out of options yeah. as well. So Rick had delayed and delayed and delayed. Like you're sitting across the table, and I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable situation, but I felt like that I had gotten a lot more leeway than a lot of guys would have in that situation. Uh, it, we had struggled, we'd failed week after week, year after year, and I I was like, man, you know, I don't know how much further Rick can go with this the way it's going. <laughs> Um, I don't know where the sponsors are mentally over it all. So I felt like, yeah, when, and we, you know, we'd change things. We'd change crew chiefs. We'd change people. We'd move things around. But this was a big shift, uh, moving me from one shop to the other, uh, with an entirely new group of people. And I thought, yeah, this has to work or this is, this will be the, this will be the end. (laughs) But it ended up working out. How close was he uh, in his assumptions of the, of the situation? Was he was he sort of out of options? <laughs> no, no. We just I, – I believe, you know, we're all in the people business. And I don't care what kind of business you're in, it's got to be – it's got to mesh. It's got to fit. And you got to get that right combination. And I could, I could see it and feel it. It wasn't right. And I felt like Stevie could do it. And Dale told me a couple of times – that that shop was never as good as the 48 shop, 2448. So I knew I had to get it in his head that he was going to be in that shop with that team. And uh, and Stevie was already there. And so it, it just worked out. Yeah. And, uh, no, but it, I never I never thought about this as the end of it. I, was, I thought about it. I'm not going to – I'm not going to let him fail. You know, I'm going to – we're going to keep going – changing till we get it right is it because there was a confidence issue going i mean i mean he pretty much had lost his confidence as a dra- race car driver right i mean it, it, it was building him back up the where he you know he used to feel like he was the best driver on the racetrack when you don't feel like that you've lost an edge You're, you've lost several tenths right yeah well we, we we didn't give him what he needed and uh and we just again the the, the combination wasn't there but uh because we started off with a bang. We'd go down oh, to yeah. Daytona. And like won everything we went. I remember we went to Vegas to test, and we were fast. And uh, all the cars were fast. All of us were. But we were – me and Tony Jr. were really good. And Jeff came over and said, dang. He's like, you're impressive. <laughs> and I thought, dang, this is awesome. Like, it's working. <laughs> and then we went to Daytona and won the shootout and won the qualifying race. And, uh, you know – we had a great season all the way. I mean, we weren't winning races, but we were running first and second in the points. You were running with, up in the points. Yeah, yeah. me and yeah. Kyle Bush were first and second. They were right together. And uh, and then he dumped then, you at Richmond. Yeah, but then we yeah. went on and won at uh, Michigan, and we had a pretty solid year. Didn't finish yeah. out in the, in the playoffs very well or whatever. But <clears throat> started out great. Yeah. And then it kind of went off the rails. Yeah, why? Why did it go off the rails? The – me and Tony Jr., we're getting pretty hard on each other, especially on the radio. And I think – so for me and Tony Jr., that was kind of normal. We did that all the time back in the Bud days. <laughs> but when Rick and them heard it, they were like, dang, this is bad. <laughs> yeah. These oh, guys – Well, I won, I won, I won the race. I, 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 I don't know who won the race, but we, one of my cars won the race. And here comes the media. And I thought they wanted to talk about the race that we just won. No, they were going to talk about Dale and Tony Jr. going at it on the radio. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember all of it, but uh, it was just the, – it was so much focus on you, and everybody was expecting, you know, a lot. Yeah, DW and, said and, and they were going to win six races the first year. Oh, yeah. And and everybody was listening to everything y'all said. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was, a, lot of a, it was a lot of pressure. I know. A lot yeah. of pressure on all of us. For sure.